after our first uh, meeting and uh, our exchange of ideas, uh, I have impression that uh, also for you as for me, um, the post-secularism is not uh, one more abstract uh, concept, but uh, is loaded uh, with a very intense uh, existential content. And uh, let us assume that we will uh, deepen our knowledge uh, of post-secular mentality, of post-secular way of understanding uh, many problems. Uh, in our discussion, I, at the end, I mentioned that perhaps uh, uh, next week we could include uh, in our discussion also the presidential election in the US, uh, but uh, I have impression that uh, there are so many different opinions, so many different evaluations, uh, also of the last uh, um, debate between uh, uh, current uh, President uh, Donald Trump and uh, his opponent uh, Joe Biden, that it will be more, uh, will make more sense that we will discuss uh, the final <laughs> result of the election after um, uh, November 3rd. And uh, this week we will. Uh, stick to our previous uh, plan, and namely uh, we will try to um, define more precisely uh, other terms connected with uh, post-secularism, namely secularism, uh, privatization, deprivatization, perhaps public religion, and all this uh, uh, connected with one another uh, realities. Uh, on our uh, on your platform, uh, campus platform, I uh, send you some uh, readings uh, which could uh, be helpful for your understanding of these uh, concepts. Uh, one is very simple by um, Andrzej Bronk who is a professor at the Catholic University in Lublin. And uh, in his uh, review article, he um, looks uh, closely on different uh, understanding of uh, the concept of secularization, which I think is a, is a very good introduction to the complexity of, of, of this problem. Uh, another, uh, a suggestion for reading is the entire book, uh, and I guess uh, it's hardly possible to, to read it, but nevertheless you have, uh, you have the possibility to have a look on the content. Uh, the book is entitled Rethinking Secularism. So already the title is the, is the suggestion that is um, not so easy to uh, understand the uh, secularization as a, as a clear process or concept. There are many different possibilities to, to approach it. And uh, from many articles uh, which or essays which you will find in this book, I will suggest uh, for those of you who are interested to have a look uh, or to read uh, the article by Jose Casanova. Uh, secularism, the secular secularization and the secularism. So already in, in uh, naming or, or mentioning different nuances in these uh, terms, uh, Casanova, who is the Catholic uh, sociologist of religion, an author of well-known uh, book, uh, Religion and the Public Sphere. Uh, he is uh, proposing uh, uh, nuanced understanding of, of, of these terms. This is not, uh, of course, uh, only a reaction toward religion. 
the opposite is true. Also, religious people were uh, all the time uh, aware that uh, in their perception of reality, they are sphere of which are uh, independent of religion, secular. Oh, we assist uh, on, on the process of uh, losing uh, influence uh, by religious institutions, just to mention hospitals, schools. And this is the normal logical development of, uh, uh, of Western civilizations, but also in other uh, parts of the globe. You assist on, on this uh, process. Uh, another author who reflect on um, uh, secularization, but from different point of view, is R. Scott Appleby, or Appleby, uh, rethinking fundamentalism in in secular. So uh, Appleby is very important because he he. Uh, 10 years ago, more or less, or 20 already, uh, was um, gave an idea to uh, study carefully religious fundamentalism in the modern world. Is there are 10 volumes? I remember I saw it in in Cambridge University. It's very uh, really impressive that. Uh, Progress of secularization are waking up a kind of reaction of religious people, of some who, who consider this process of, of uh, secularization as a, as a threat to their religious convictions. So the fundamentalism is a kind of, of uh, reaction to it. So you can, you can read also this. And uh, the last uh, suggestion uh, for your reading is uh, a book, um, or better, is, is again an essay uh, which was previously published in larger book, but they just send you, because they have it, uh, uh, 30 pages of an essay uh, of uh, Casanova. Uh, who uh, reflect uh, many years after, uh, after means uh, after the first publication of his book, uh, Religion and Public Sphere in 80s, where he uh, discovered, uh, and this book became really a, a path-breaking uh, uh, reflection on uh, uh, presence of religion in, in public sphere, uh, so in the 80s, he, he, he wrote uh, about the uh, return of uh, religion to to public sphere. Uh, particularly, he kept in mind uh, Catholic countries like uh, Brazil, uh, Poland, uh, East Europe generally, East and Central Europe. But what is uh, very important and surprising for many sociologists of religion that already in the 80s, so 20, 30 years after the beginning of uh, introduction of the concept of uh, secularization, uh, many sociologists of religion realized that uh, uh, this um, assumption that uh, secularization is inevitable uh, are not uh, keeping uh, uh, path to the reality. Uh, the most important um, uh, point in, in Casanova's uh, thesis was a theology of uh, liberation or liberation theology, which is a large phenomenon. Next semester I will have an entire course dedicated to it, uh, but uh, to put it briefly, uh, uh, liberation theology is, is something which are taking the impulse, the departure point from very secular uh, ideology, even anti-religious ideology or philosophy as Marxism, 
is taking it as a essential part of its uh, reflection on the on the reality of the people who are living in in very um, so, socially speaking neglected environment uh, poor people and there are a lot of, of representatives of this uh, uh, way of thinking uh, in Peru, in Brazil, in Chile, in, uh, even in Argentina. Uh, so South America is a continent where a religion was perceived uh, by poor people as uh, a liar, as a, as, as a dimension which helped them to gain uh, human rights, uh, emancipatory uh, development of their uh, awareness of being equal in the uh, respective countries, etc. And uh, what is important also that exactly in 80s and 90s of 20th century, is, uh, those uh, theologians, just to, uh, I will name a few names like uh, Gustavo Gutierrez, Leonardo Boff, uh, perhaps you heard uh, these names, they were um, per perceived by um, uh, followers in, in Peru, in case of uh, Gutierrez, or in Brazil, in case of, of Leonardo Boff, as a as a very uh, progressive voices, uh, religious voices who are helping people to, to gain the human rights, the, the dignity and so on and so on. But in the same time, and it could be a, a point of discussion for, for our uh, class, uh, exactly those uh, theologians were perceived as a threat to uh, religion. Uh, this perception was very clear present in Vatican and uh, Pope uh, uh, John Paul II and his uh, close uh, collaborator, uh, Cardinal uh, Josef Ratzinger, were issued, issued some documents criticizing them. So this uh, growing presence uh, of religion in public sphere sometimes uh, is perceived as uh, as not so good. So I, I will be curious if, first of all, if you heard about what you think about, and perhaps uh, we can have a good chat. Uh, uh, what about uh, uh, this uh, return of religion into public sphere? So the secularization, how it looks like in in our Polish context. We already mentioned Polish context as, as uh, relevant for for our reflections on post secularism, and I think uh, that exactly uh, uh, liberation theology is uh, completely unpresent in Poland. Although, uh, for example, uh, Gustavo Gutierrez's book uh, Liberation Theology. Uh, in Spanish uh, written uh, Teología de la Liberación is translated into Polish and you can read it, but uh, hardly you can find any, any uh, reception of this book. So to, to summarize, uh, I think this concept, uh, a problematic concept of secularization, the return of, of religion, privatization, means that you keep uh, your, your religion only for your private sphere and the opposite tendency, deprivatization. Why, for example, the workers in, 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 in Gdynia, Gdańsk, uh, felt uh, necessity to call a priest to be with them, to celebrate the mass for them. So they wanted to have religion as, the, as a public event. So deprivatization. So all this uh, I, I uh, mentioned here uh, uh, just to warm up our discussion and I hope that you will have time also to have a look on some of the readings which I uh, sent on the platform and uh, I really hope that we will have nice discussion as we had last time. So see you then.